Hey YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 3, What is Dead May Never Die. I took an outline, I wrote an outline down this time, because there was so much that happened in the episode that I know I'll miss stuff if I didn't do this. Uh, so this one's probably going to be a bit longer um, than the last two. Uh, and the, the lighting, if there's a lighting problem here, it's because my blinds are blowing in the wind, basically, because it's so nice out. I have, to, I have to leave the window open. Sorry. Um, this was my favorite episode of this season, easily. Uh, not that the other two were bad, but this one was just leaps and bounds ahead of it. Uh, maybe not leaps and bounds, but it was definitely my favorite. And to be honest, I think it was my favorite one they've done uh, in, in 13 hours. I thought this was the most complete hour that they've done. Even the best episodes from the first season... You know, the ninth episode where Ned dies, all that stuff was, you know, that episode had one great scene and the rest of the episode was very, very good. This episode, I think, was just littered with great scenes, one after the other. Um, and I just, I thought it was great. I really thought it was the best one they've done. Um, before I get on to the episode, I just want to say something about last week's episode with Littlefinger and the, the sex scenes and everything like that. The writers did say, I think I mentioned something like this in the review, the writers did say that they needed to make to remind the audience that you know Littlefinger is not a nice guy um, and that he is a pimp and this is how he runs things they just wanted that in there um, you know I think I said something like that last week and then they actually that's really why they did it um, also because of how he gained sympathy from what happened with Cersei in the first episode so um, yeah that's what, that's what the writer said so that's why that was in there if anyone was pissed off about that scene that's why it was there um, this episode didn't have any Danny, Rob, Jamie, Stannis, and his crew, and who else wasn't in it? Uh, Joffrey wasn't in it. Uh, Danny will be back next week, from what I hear, in a big way. Rob will be there also. Jamie apparently isn't even around next week either. Uh, Joffrey will be from the preview we saw, and Stannis will be back in a big way next week too, with all those people. Uh, but again, you know, they weren't there this week, they'll be there next week. Uh, and some of the people from this week will sit out, um, including with including the person that I'm starting with this week, which is John, who uh, it was a good start to start with him just to get rid of the cliffhanger from last week where, um, you know, we get the cliffhanger over with. Um, we establish that they're leaving, and his storyline will change, and when we get back to him, they're going to be in a different place. Um... It was, uh, it was, you know, he had a nice little talk with, like, Mormont and everything like that. We had the nice little scene with Sam and, and, and Gilly, and that was, that was fine. But, you know, it's off now. He won't be around next week. So kind of like Danny, he get, he gets, like, a break after, you know, this one specific setting, and then he's off. So it was fine. It was a good opener. It opened with, you know, kind of like a jolt and just let us move on, and then, you know, we were done with them for the hour. Um, so I liked that they just, you know, finished with it, and that was fine. Um, then we move down to Bran and Winterfell, um, and his wolf dreams, which, um, it was, um, you know, he had a nice scene with Lewin, um, it was just nice to catch up with Bran, Bran just, you know, further establishing that he's got this connection with his wolf. Uh, we've seen all the, the direwolves, the CG enhanced direwolves now, except for Rickon, um, his the big black uh, wolf shaggy dog, but we haven't seen Rickon yet, either. Not surprisingly. Um, but yeah, it was a nice little, you know, uh, thing. It would be important as it goes on. Um, it was also nice to see Hoder, and it's nice to hear him say Hoder. He should have said it in the first uh, episode when he was in it. I was disappointed he didn't, so I'm glad he did this week. Um... All right, then moving down to King's Landing, um, I gotta say that Sophie Turner, who plays Sansa, is—I thought she did her best job uh, this week that she's done. She was able to pretty much convey all of her like emotions and her problems without saying anything. She was just constantly on the verge of tears, um, you know, reaching for the cup when Cersei finally does like really mess with her, almost pushes her to the point of um, of actually like you know sobbing or saying something. And um, yeah, she was just great. Um, then, uh, she has a new handmaiden, which is Tyrion's, um, girlfriend, Shay, who, um, isn't, I mean, she's not really being that 
I know she's stuck in like, you know, one room, but she's not making herself seem very, you know, worth doing things for in a couple of episodes. Maybe that's just, you know, I don't know. That was just me. Like, she's just being, she complains, complains, like, you know, he, you will be killed if you're caught here, lady. How about you, you know, figure that out? But she got what she wanted, and now she's going to be with Sansa, which is even a little more dangerous, considering that she'll be around Cersei, I guess, um, a little bit more, which is kind of not the brightest way to go. Um, Tyrion had a great scene this week when he basically tricks um, Pycelle, Varys, and Littlefinger, each giving them three different scenarios and trying to figure out which one is the, the mole for Cersei. Um, it was beautifully done, the way it just, it just switched to one to after Pycelle just switched to Varys, almost like mid-sentence, and then switched to Littlefinger. Um, Brian Cogman, who wrote this episode, this that was his idea to do it that way, and the episode's director. So it wasn't the two head writers, it was him. Brian Cogman wrote the fourth episode of season one, which is probably one of the weaker ones from the first season, but like I said, I think this is my, the best of the series so far, so I was really impressed with him. And to know that that whole thing was his idea, not the head writers, that's impressive stuff. So I will look forward to his next one episode next season um, much more than uh, I was for this one. So uh, so props to him, big time. Um, Cersei continuing to... They're continuing to basically give her, like, the one bitch scene and the one, like, vulnerable scene in episode. The bitch scene was the one with Cersei, where you're just like, I, I hate you. And then the vulnerable scene was where she finds out that Marcella is going to be traded away to Dorne, and she's just, you know, breaks down because she's going to lose her daughter, and the whole thing about her being sold to Robert Brent comes back. Um, so again, it's a dynamic that, you know, I like that they're doing. Um, well, not a dynamic, I guess, but uh, her dynamic with Tyrion is still good. Um, and it's just escalating worse and worse every single week, and um, that's what they're going to do the whole season. It's just going to escalate, and that's how it's supposed to go. So, so I love it. Um, Littlefinger is going to go um, off to see Catelyn next week. Um, so that'll be interesting. They'll give him something different to do. He won't be in his whorehouse, so people won't be complaining about Roz. Uh, I guess. Oh, she wasn't in this episode, so they won't be able to complain about her next week either. Um, yeah, so that was interesting there. Pycelle, um, who got his beard chopped off, which is nice to see. I was told by one of my friends that Pycelle is actually Donovan from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which is just slightly mind-blowing. Um, it makes me appreciate him even more, so that's great. Um, it was a very satisfying scene, considering he's one of the people that helped bring Ned down, so it was nice. Nice to see. Um, I think that's it for King's Landing. Moving on to Pike and the Greyjoys. Another actor, Alfie Allen, who, you know, was good the first season. He was fine. He was there. He was fantastic this episode. Uh, really made me, like, feel for, for Theon, you know, for his whole situation. He, um... I like that he was able to tell off his father a little bit this week and just basically point out the obvious, like, you know, I was sent away because you lost, and you didn't even give a shit about it, and now you're pissed because I'm back? Like, the whole point of me leaving was you. Um, so it was nice, and I saw that Asha almost, uh, Asha, excuse me, Yara, it's Asha in the books, Yara, you know, I thought almost had a little bit more of a glint in her eye, more towards sympathy for him, just for that, um, just basically because he had a point. You know, and Balin clearly knew he had a point because all he did was backhand him and then fucking walk out. So, um, so that was good. His scene where he wrote the letter to Rob and then he chose to burn it, it was just beautifully filmed where it was just him in a completely dark room, uh, basically all alone, surrounded by darkness. Is a good representation of what his situation is. And again, the director of this episode, who is, I don't know his name, but he was the cinematographer for a couple episodes from the first season, and he did a great job. It was almost like no drop-off from Alan Taylor from the first two episodes. I was really impressed with him. I hope he directs multiple episodes um, next season. I really do. I thought he was brilliant. Um, what else? What else? Um, the baptism scene. 
Um, just had just great music again, beautifully filmed, and Alfie Allen's just look on his face, much like Sophie Turner, who's able to convey that he was not happy about what he's doing. It was just kind of accepting everything. And that seemed to be the theme of the episode was acceptance, or choosing not to accept things. That's at least what I've heard from other writers that, that talked about this episode, uh, and I agree with that. That's not my original thought process, but that's I've heard that and I agree with it. And uh, it was nice to see they were able to put like a theme in the episode, you know, especially for a show like this. That's very difficult to do. Um, Alright, moving on to Renly. Uh, the really, I love that it's a great, like, fun dynamic with Renly and Loris and his new, and his sister Marjorie. Marjorie. Um, it's just the whole, it's such a much lighter approach to things, much like Tyrion's stuff in King's Landing, which the show needs. It needs something lighter with all the other dark, awful shit going on. So, I love seeing it. was like a breath of fresh air to be there and watch them. Um, and, um, you know, the whole the whole thing is just insane that he's marrying, you know, his lover's sister. And, um, yes, of course, I was thinking as, you know, Natalie Dormer is standing there naked, it's like, dude, you know, get it together. But, to think about it, you know, basically that would be, be like if you had to have sex with your girlfriend's brother, as a, if you were a straight, if you're a straight guy. So, that can be difficult, I guess. Um, Yeah. But, um, it was just a lot of fun. A lot of fun, which was good. And new character, Brienne, was just, I mean, um, she was just brilliant. Uh, right from the get-go. She was in the episode for maybe, what, three minutes total? And just completely established, completely, automatically, you know, a favorite. Um, her scene with Catelyn was really nice to hear Catelyn, to see Catelyn smile about Brienne saying, don't call me a lady. Clearly she's thinking about Arya. Um, and Brienne is pretty much what Arya would be if she was allowed to just kind of grow up. And um, I think that's why Catelyn was smiling uh, about it. It was just nice. It was nice to see. Again, very much lighter and just kinder stuff going on. Um, speaking of Arya, uh, great scene with Yorin that she had, uh, you know, before he gets killed off. Maisie Williams, again, just, you know, this girl who has a ton of talent. Uh, I thought it was her best work this week. So these actors are just, like, stepping up every week. Um, uh, Yorin got to go out like uh, Boromir, which was funny. Um, it was really, really sad. And um, then we lose another child on this show. Season of Killing Young People. If it's not a baby, it's a kid. Nice and bloody. I was pissed off to see Arya lose Needle very much. Very much upset about that. Um... Arya's quick thinking to point out that, yeah, Lamy's the one that's the, you know, that's, the dead kid is the one you're looking for. It was, at first I thought, oh, it's quick thinking, that's brilliant. Then I kind of thought, these guys are idiots if they believe that because they know they're looking for a black-haired armorer's apprentice. Lamy is not black-haired and he is, a fu he is skinny as fuck. So, that's a little, eh, not too well done. But otherwise, otherwise brilliant. Um... You know, right now, uh, from season one to season two, if you look at the first three episodes of season one to the first three of season two, season two is, like, way ahead. Um, and I've heard people complain that season two has lost something. Some people, anyway, I don't, I have no idea what they're talking about. No idea. Um, but, yeah. Uh, the show got renewed for season three, by the way. Um, so we'll get 30, uh, episodes of this, which is fantastic. Better than 20. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there if you didn't know. Uh, I will be trying to go to Professor Tom's bar to watch the episode next week and try to film some of my um, ad adventures, as it were. Um, so, uh, yeah, if anyone knows, Professor Tom's bar is on 2nd Avenue between 14th and 13th Street um, in Manhattan. So if anyone's around, you know, show up, maybe we'll say hello if we're there. Uh, Alright, that's it for the non-spoiler section. God, I know this is going to be like a 30-minute review. Non-spoiler section. So now I'm going to go to the spoiler section. So if you haven't read the books, stop listening, shut it off, and that's it. All right? And okay, here we go. Um, where am I going to start? Again, Danny, who wasn't in the episode, will be back next week, and she will make it to Korth. Um, so pretty much start that, um, that whole section, which is fine. She'll probably have more screen time next week. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. 
Anyway, okay, John. Um, I don't remember if John spoke with Mormon in the book like this, where Mormon basically told him that he knew what was going on, because I don't know if that's a, a direct change or if that was something that he found out later. I'm not really sure about that. It's not a major change or anything. Um, Sam and Gilly. Again, it was nice foreshadowing for stuff. It still fucks with me that I still keep thinking of their sex scene from A Feast for Crows. That kind of ruins stuff still. Uh, but it was nice to see. Um, with uh, next week, John's not going to be around, so I guess we're just going to kind of pick up in episode 5 with him being at the, the Fist of the First Men or getting there. I think that's where we go. Um, next. Uh, and meet, like, Half Hand. Um, or they'll probably start talking about Half Hand before we meet him uh, and get through that whole thing. Um, so we know John's on in next week, and he's not going to be in episode 9. Episode 10, he's probably going to kill Half Hand, so we got episodes 5, 6, 7, and 8 for John to have that little, you know, like, story section. Um, so I was interested to see how they're going to do that. I think that's basically that's how it's going to happen. Um... You know, when, when uh, Ygrette's going to show up, however you pronounce her name, we'll find out. Um, but it's fine. It's a nice break now. Craster's done, over with. Let's move on to some nice Iceland-looking Iceland uh, locations in Episode 5. Uh, so that's fine. Um, Bran, clearly not having the reeds in, uh, in this season. Uh, clearly they're just going to use Lewin. Um, like they did in this episode, to kind of decipher Bran's uh, dreams. Um, I do wonder if they're going to do Bran's dream where he finds himself dead um, uh, and like drowned or whatever. Uh, supposed to be, you know, that the it was he's drowned because the Greyjoys are coming and that's water and everything like that. So that's why that's there. Uh, but clearly, I really think they're setting up just the Bran Lewin, you know, dynamic because we're going to lose Lewin by the end of the year and it's going to hurt that much more. Um, He's a great actor. Yeah, he plays Lewin, too. He's just everyone on the show. Just all the side characters just brilliantly done. Um, okay, King's Landing. I like that they're keeping Cersei's drinking and just, like, trolling Sansa. Because uh, I remember that's a big part of the book. Cersei just doesn't leave Sansa alone. It's just really mean. It's funny, but it's mean. Um, Marcella and Tomlin, I'm liking they're getting more lines because they do become a little more important. Uh, I like that they're basically establishing that Tomlin and Marcella are both very sweet and just kind of don't really know, don't see the awful big picture. Um, and I think next week, I guess we're going to see Marcella get, you know, uh, boated away. Um, so that should be kind of sad. Um, yeah, let's see. Shay, I won't say they're screwing up Shay's character. Not that it's a brilliant character from the books. Some people think to, you know... Um, but, yeah, she's alright. Her making sense of her handmaid, perhaps it makes it easier for Cersei to figure out and then, you know, do something about it. But, um... I don't think she did... I thought she didn't do anything about it. I thought she screwed up and did something to the... Like, the fake one. Cersei thought it was, like, Tyrion's girlfriend, and it wasn't. Uh, but I don't remember. But, um... Yeah, so well, I'll, I'll see where that goes with her being Sansa's handmaid. Again, you can see that Sophie Turner was just, like, lashing out at her just because she has finally something to lash out at. But she's in, like, a lot of pain, and she wants her to stay. And maybe it's the best thing that happened to the character. I don't know. Um, the Tyrion scene. Everyone knows that chapter from the book. All you have to say is the 1, 2, 3 chapter. I was wondering how they were going to be able to do it. You know, they weren't going to be able to do it in the, on the, the way the books do, where he thinks 1, 2, 3 which is my favorite part of that chapter. It's just brilliant. Uh, George has great chapter endings, and that was just one of my favorites where he just says three. Um, the show adapted it just brilliantly. I was so happy when it cut midway to Vars. I was like, that's how they're going to do this. And I was like, I was just thrilled. Um, absolutely thrilled by it. Not one complaint about it. Not one. Um, and also nice to know that Dorne is going to be in the show. They're not going to like leave Dorne out like the River Run... Uh, they kind of need Dorne for the Red Viper and stuff. But it's nice to know that it's being, it is being set up uh, early on. Um, Littlefinger continues to be a little more emotional on the show than the books. Uh, lashing out. I mean, I know in the books he kind of tells Tyrion, you know, leave me out of your next deception or I don't like being lied to or whatever. 
Um, but adding him, yelling at him, calling him dwarf is a little bit much. Uh, but he, he has a little more weakness in the show, and the show's pointing it out that, oh, I'll send you to you know, see Catelyn. And he's going to go basically for that reason, it seems to be. Um, but we know Catelyn is a weakness from him from the book, so it, it, it works. It works for me, anyway. Um, it looks like next week he's going to be, along with that, is going to be bringing Ned's bones to Catelyn. I could tell from one of the other previews that he, he brings a box with him, and she's upset by what's in this box, and I can't think of anything else. Uh, also, she pulls, like, a knife on him. So he probably tries to, like, make an advance or something stupid, and that's what he gets for it. So we'll see. I think that's what they're going to do, but we'll see. Um, God, this episode, this review is long. Um, let's see. Uh, the Pycel scene was fine. They shave him a little bit more in the book, but it was fine. Um, yeah, I really have nothing to say about it. I don't think it was very diff different uh, from the books, except I don't think Bronn was there. I'm not sure if Bronn was there. I know they kept in the goat line. There are no goats here. And he's like, we'll find something else. That was still funny. Um, yeah, so that's it for that. Uh, the Greyjoys. Um, again, I like... I don't even know if in the books if Theon out lets it loose on his father about, like, you know, hey, this is originally your fault. But um, if he didn't, I'm glad the show did. If they did, then fine. Whatever. Uh, the Yara character, I've heard people say she's too serious. But she was giving him some shit about the sea bitch and everything like that, so... I don't know. She's fine with me. I've no, I have no, nothing really bad to say about her. Um, so, yeah. Oh, God. Yes, I was face-palming when Theon was burning Rob's letter. I was like, don't do it, man. It's gonna go, it's gonna go so bad. It's gonna go so bad for you. I felt so bad for him. Um... It's going to be interesting to watch to see if I can hate him in the next, you know, couple of weeks. Um, because I know what happens to him with Reek and everything like that. So, we'll, we'll be, that'll be interesting to see. They changed the... the. It should have been a drowning ceremony. They didn't do it. Um, but I guess because dramatically or visually, it just maybe wouldn't have worked than just having the water pour over him. It would have been maybe more dramatic character-wise, but visually it probably just didn't work. That's why they didn't do it. Um, okay, on to Renly, who looks like I thought he was supposed to look uh, from the beginning. He's supposed to look like a young version of Robert. Um, first season he didn't, but his look from season one to season two is almost like a character growth. Um, so, so it's nice to see him look that way. Loras is more sassy, um, like he is in the books. Um, just bitching at Catelyn right away, which I liked. Nice to see. Marjorie, huge change from the books, from her being a more virginal and innocent to kind of slutty, and uh, I like it. She um, she uh, is more of a smart player in this in the game, which the Tyrells are. So it kind of makes more sense. It won't be like a quick turnaround, like oh, you know, she's innocent, but like oh, look here, now there's a plan to you know kill Joffrey, marry Joffrey, and kill him. Um, uh, so that was fine, which um, basically uh, also basically leads to Littlefinger is going to show up there next week. People are, com are complaining that he's going to show up. He's going to show up and start talking to the Tyrells after we lose uh, Renly. So they're going to st start setting up the the purple wedding right away, um, which needs to happen. You know, they need to set it up, or they have the opportunity to set it up. So I'm fine with it. Um, Brienne, just completely spot on. She's a little more, um, feisty, which I like. Instead of, a little more feisty instead of, like, dim-witted. She's a little dim-witted in the book. She really is. Um, and her scene with, uh, Kat, I loved it because she's going to be, have a lot of scenes with Kat, so I like, they had good chemistry right away, so I just, um, and I can't wait to see her and Jamie. That, that, that's just a lot of fun. Can't wait to see it. Um. All right, moving on to the last section segment. I love that Yorin is responsible in the show for Arya's like death uh, list. Um, just because it adds something to his character and it gives that her giving that list a little more meaning. Um, so I like that change very much. Um, the battle was more minor than in the books, and I heard people actually complain that uh, Jock and Hygar wasn't wearing his hood. Shut up with that. Jesus. 
enough with minor complaints like that. People got to stop with that shit. Um, Yorin's death, I think, was the same in the book. Maybe he got his skull, like, split in the book. Uh, but I love the Boromir death and then just getting stabbed in it. Uh, we got the, we didn't see it in the book. Arya fi finds him later after she comes around uh, and gets captured later on. They shorten that and have them getting captured right then and there. Um, which, again, shortens everything, which, which works for the show. So that's fine. Um... It was sad to see Hot Pie not yell Hot Pie in, in charge, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, and I think that's it. Again, I'm going next week to Professor Tom's because supposedly they give you a free shot when a character dies, which maybe they did in this episode with Yorin, but I kind of want to see the Shadow Baby and I kind of want to see Yen Renly getting killed and see the crowd reaction next week, so, yeah. Yeah, that's it, I think. Uh, again, the Season 3 renewal was great. We're going to get the first half of A Storm of Swords, roughly. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to end it with the Red Wedding, uh, Season 3, and probably end Season 4 with the re reveal of Stoneheart. Um, that's what I would do anyway. Um, so yeah, awesome stuff. Um, my favorite episode of the series so far. Tell me what you thought. That's it. This is 26 minutes long. That is too fucking long. All right. Later.